I uh, really wasn't going to come here tonight. <laughs> I'm serious, I wasn't. Uh, and, and then uh, so much has been happening. Carlos has been calling me every single day. <laughs> Are you going to go to my roast? Are you sure you're going to be there? And, and I started thinking, it's kind of strange. <laughs> maybe he's afraid nobody's going to show up, and maybe nobody is going to show up. And I'm going to be the only one there. And then I got a, uh, a call from Annalisa, and she asked me to be the roast master. And it turns out that Bob Rivard, it's something about the rain, you know. He had to put, he had to, uh, put together a, a, an addition, a special, I don't know what he's doing. Basically, he flaked on us. <laughs> Rivard, for the record, Rivard flaked on us. <laughs> But I, uh, I've stepped in, and I'm, I'm here to, uh, to do the best I can. I have absolutely nothing prepared, because uh, I really didn't think there'd be anybody here. <laughs> and I, I, I read the email from, from the organizers, and it said it would be a group of Carlos's friends and admirers. I said, oh, how many people can that be? <laughs> but uh, I figured, well, you know, I can't get out of it now. So uh, I thought, well, I'll go and, and see see what it's like, and then I got here, and then all of you people are here, and then now I got to be here, so now I got to say something, and I don't have the slightest idea what I'm going to say. But um, I did. I wrote a letter to Carlos, and my uh, my intent was to come and hand him the letter and leave, you know, kind of like a subpoena. He's used to that. <laughs> um, and because I have nothing prepared, I guess I'm just going to instead of handing it to him, I'm just going to read the letter. And, uh, and then that'll be that. Um, the, the thing is, I, uh, I wrote the letter in Spanish. <laughs> I didn't know I knew so many white people. <laughs> Anuncios en el boletín de la iglesia. 
you on an asset. <laughs> En fin, qué bueno que por fin pasó este chistecito. This has been a wonderful evening so far. Ay, cambié mi número de celular para que no me estés chingando. I hope to enjoy your friendship for years now. ¿Te bañas? Best regards. Victor.
18% of the time on politics, his favorite topic, elections, redistricting, election outcomes, and reapportionment. They were surprisingly not too partisan. They, were, they made some sense. In December 31st of this last year, 06, Bob Richter, who is the public editor for the San Antonio Express News, wrote an article explaining why they were moving Carlos and his column, among others. I took special notice of that, so this is my recommendation to you for the long run. They suggested they were moving him and other columnists from page 3 of section A, that is the most read section, other than the sports page and funny papers, <laughs> to the Metro on Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays, paired up with other columnists. And then Richter asked the former publisher and editor of the San Antonio papers, Charles Kilpatrick, does that mean, one, when you move a person, that they're going to lose readership? He said yes. And does it mean when you jump from the front page to the middle part of the section, you'll lose more readers? He said yes. So this is your 60th. Winter is setting in. <laughs> Here's what I recommend. I do know that he has a great passion for cooking and a great kitchen. So I recommend to Carlos that he begin writing articles for the taste and food section to make sure that he survives. Our next roaster is the legendary feminist leader, a member of the Texas House of Representatives from 68 to 72. She was a gubernatorial candidate in 1972, candidate for vice presidential nomination that same year, a former president of Wells College, the Honorable Sissy Barron. Did it share? 
So I'm here this evening that then, oh, a year or so or two later, I heard about, uh, and I knew of Carlos by reputation, of course, by then. And then I heard that he couldn't get a job because of his activism. And I just thought that was the most absurd thing I'd ever heard. For one thing, what do we talk about? What do we tell young people to do? Get an education. So that started another saga, which was that Carlos is my secretary in the special session of the Texas legislature in 1971. Uh, I had a few lobby stories that involved Carlos, but I will leave, leave that to our honoree tonight. <laughs> Thank you very much. Our next, next uh, roaster for this evening is the state senator from District 26, the Honorable Letizia Vandepute. Intimidating glare in the business. 
Just look at, I mean, just look at it. And he looks damn mean. He's the only guy I know that can curl Fideo around his fork just by staring at it. So mean. And we like the same dish. Those of us who grew up in families at the end of the month, Wienes con Fideo. That's actually Frank's with a little vermicelli. Okay, that intimidating Carlos Guerra stare, that glare. See, I think that they're handling Iraq all wrong. They should just send Carlos. I mean, one look at him, and those bad guys would say, oh crap, I'm out of here, I'm out of here. And that would be a mission accomplished. And that would be, I mean, we could really mean it that time. But he is a thoughtful, he's passionate, and he's a very multifaceted man. And when I encounter him, I never know which Carlos Guerra that I'm going to be talking with that day. Will it be the vitriol spruing, the systemic generational discrimination against the Mexican-American in Texas, Carlos Guerra? Or will it be the vitriol spruing, the systemic generational